so much fury about the jokes Michelle Wolf made on stage last night. After an instant online backlash. New tonight, Kevin Hart is apologizing. I'm even in trouble with my mother, so don't worry, everyone hates me. This has been a lot of problems. Isn't it funny that the only time your race or gender is questioned is when you're not a white man? You can do jokes about anything if the jokes are funny. If you're Hispanic and a person at a podium asks, are there any Hispanics in the room? That's your cue to get out of that room. I happen to be uh, also a member of the LGBTQ or STUVWXYZ community. <laughs> Who's had rape jokes forever? But it's just like those jokes have usually been like, rape! <laughs> That's the full joke. There's some things that I have to, had to do as gay that I didn't have to do as black. I didn't have to come out black. Raise your hand if someone stared at your boobs on the way to work today. Mom, I'm black. Oh, no, no, I can't do that. As you can see, I'm being joined by four shy, very retiring, uh, withdrawn <laughs> people. I'm going to try to draw them out as best as I can. They don't have an opinion either. Um, I'll just say that in, in advance that we're all grateful that you help make light during very dark times. So let me introduce you formally to Judy Gold, who's at the end, comedian, writer, podcast host, Kill Me Now which is the uh, apt title. Wanda Sykes, comedian, writer, actress, producer. <laughs> Just put out uh, a tweet saying that new Netflix special, Not Normal, coming yes. out. Jenny Hagel, writer, producer, hysterical person for Late Night with Seth Meyers. Cameron Esposito, comedian and co-creator of Take My Wife. So, you know, comedians are wicked smart. That's what makes them funny. They are, in many ways, uh, social commentary. So let's dig into what you're digging into. Wanda, let's start with you. You've been touring with a new stand-up special. Mm -hmm. It's called, Oh Well. Did I do that right? Yes. Oh Well. Oh Well. well. Um, do you think the political <laughs> climate affects your comedy? And, and does it help to be funny when you're really mad? Um, absolutely. The, the political climate affects my comedy. I, um, I, I draw from that. You know, it's, to me, it's, it's like the elephant in the room if I don't talk about what's, what's happening in the world and in politics. And I'm really funny when uh, things are effed up in the, in the country. <laughs> yep. there's, there's just more to, to draw off of. Cause I, yeah, because I am angry, you know. And, uh, you know, that was from I'm Gonna Be Me. And uh, I think that was, uh, right, Bush was out on his way out and Obama was, was coming in. So I was feeling pretty good. What's you making know? you mad now? What's, what's this comedy one, fodder, oh, this fodder one, right now? I, oh. oh, it's a lot of F words. Yeah. And this new one. <laughs> I'm on fire in this new one. Yeah. It's really good. Um, Jenny, you're a writer and performer for Late Night with Seth Meyers. Your job is to take this smorgasbord of bad news and turn it into a buffet, a sort of all-you-can-eat buffet. But you're also a triple threat, LGBTQ, Hispanic, a woman. Do you, how do you turn that <laughs> Not to brag. Humor? Yeah, not to yeah. brag. <laughs> That's pretty great. How do you set aside sort of feelings of are you under attack? How do you turn that into funny? How do you turn it into funny? I think um, there is such a barrage every day. I think during this administration, I just have never felt so like um, like every morning you wake up and it feels like when there's like when a cartoon where there's like a, a lot of bees coming at the cartoon character's face and they're like <laughs> I think that's what it feels like every morning when I get up and look at Twitter and look at the news. And I think the only way that I can try to make sense of it because there's so much is just to try to focus on the things where I have a really um, strong gut reaction to the story. And if there's a headline where I feel like I have a really strong personal reaction, a really strong point of view on it, then that's where I feel like I try to focus on writing from. Can and you I give think, us like, an example of a headline that led to a joke? Sure, yeah, I think, well, like, there was a clip about, um, there was the weekend that Michelle Wolf did the uh, correspondence dinner. Mm -hmm. Everybody was very mad on Monday morning that she had said something about eyeshadow. And everybody was talking about that a lot. 
The but, smoky eyeshadow, yes. I remember. And that was what I felt like every headline was and every article, except also that weekend Trump gave a, uh, a rally, and at one point in the middle of the rally, he goes, are there any Hispanics in the room? No? Good. And I was like, excuse me? <laughs> and so I felt like, for me, I was reading the news Sunday night, and I felt like, I can't believe this isn't getting more airtime. This is important. This is scary to me personally, and, this, and it's scary to me that no one noticed this. So then I wrote something about it because I felt like, hey, we got to focus up. Yeah. So. Judy, um, you have a book coming out. Say yes. Yes, I can say that. Yes, I can say that. Yep. Um, we're looking forward to write, to that. But you do stand up all over the country, and your podcast is Kill Me Now, right? Which is what's pissing you off. What's pissing you off now? Oh my God, we don't have enough time. Seriously, <laughs> but uh, I, I just, you know, Jenny was saying, like, I wake up every day now, literally, and I have an inner dialogue of, don't look at your phone. Don't look your, and, and then, right. you know, the other part, no, something happened, someone got arrested, I have to look. No, don't look at, it's just, we, we are in the weirdest time for comedy. The fact that comics who are truth tellers are being booed and hissed, I get so much hate mail. Uh, I have, th we've made fun of every president, every president. Give me a sense and of now, why are they coming at you? What are they saying? You know, Trump has no sense of humor, zero, because you have to have self-awareness. You have to be, um, <laughs> it's true. Right. You ha and, and it's disarming. Humor is disarming. And he is, always has armor up. So, because, and his supporters have no sense of humor. It's as if, if you do a Trump joke, uh, his supporters will not laugh at anything for the rest of your entire set, even if they think it's funny. He, he has poisoned. I mean, he's, look at him. He, he wants to cancel Saturday Night Live. What is wrong with you? To be mocked on Saturday Night Live? I, like, I wish they would mock me on Saturday Night Live, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Cameron, we saw a bit from your new special, uh, Rape Jokes, which I would recommend highly. I mean, all of your work, I've never enjoyed prepping for a panel more than watching all of your material. Um, but Rape Jokes has been called, heralded as the great first comedy after Me Too. In it, you talk about your own sexual assault. Why talk about that now? Why is that important now? Um, this is a very lighthearted question. You yeah, know, right? yeah. Easy one for you. <laughs> First of all, I'm I'm actually super comfortable talking about this because I think that I think honesty is is really the way to go. This has been such a it has been such a relief. We talk so much about um, uh, the the piece of shit who lives in the White House, which is really how I'm going to refer to him as, on the rest of this panel. Um, he, uh, I I'm so angry about so many things that he's done. Uh. One thing that has happened in part because he um, casually occupies that space sometimes is because um, one thing that's happened as a side effect is that I just felt I was so angry when he got elected we knew who he was this isn't a situation where it was like coming out later we knew who, exactly who he was he became the president of the United States okay well then in that case I'm not gonna be quiet anymore about the things that have happened to me. And I think that's you know, what's, what's been happening uh, across the country. And Rape Jokes was, um, I'm super proud of it. I, I toured it in really small rooms um, and released it on my own. It's just for free on my website and have raised $95,000 for rape crisis intervention. Oh, that's awesome. For Rain, yes, absolutely. That's great. So I say that because so often right, right now it can feel like, is anything even going our way? Is anybody, is anybody on our side? And you can watch this special for free, and then there's an option to donate, and people have donated $95,000. That's just a small little thing to point out to you. Like, it's not over. The fight isn't over. It's ongoing, and there are a lot, of, there are a lot more of us. What struck me about when you talk about your own sexual assault is that for years you didn't even see it in that way, that right. there w the light bulb moment, and I I think that happened for a lot of people in the Me Too movement. Yeah, I mean, I was raised like really, really Catholic. I had no sex ed. I was the, I was the mascot of my high school, and my boyfriend was the captain of the high school football team. It was the classic story that you've heard a million <laughs> times. <laughs> Where he would score a touchdown, I was a red bird. Um, <laughs> 
I know, I know sex ed, which most of us don't. I didn't know that I could have like sexual urges. I didn't know what lesbians were. I didn't know gay people were real. I mean, this is all, I'm talking, this is from, from the, I'm from the 90s, is when I'm talking about growing <laughs> up. Uh, you know, this is now. So yeah, when it came time to um, be in college and be experimenting uh, with dating, I was put into a situation where I, I didn't identify what happened to me as assault until literally like 10 years later, because I just thought, well, none of us like having sex, and all of us are drinking to survive. And so um, I think this is a, it's actually like a, re it's a relief. It it's, feels like a relief to talk about it. It's a really probably. powerful moment. Wanda, I want to get to you, yeah. people who are familiar with it. Yeah. Thank you, The Balcony! <laughs> You got a lot of fans, all of you. <laughs> Wanda, last September, you did a show in Red Bank, New Jersey, mm -hmm. and you made a joke about the president, mm -hmm. and the heckler said you were being too political, that you should never bash the president. Uh, has the tone changed post-election? How, oh how do you deal with being heckled like that? Well, honestly, it seems like uh, it's okay for straight white guys to bash the president. Yep. Um, but a, any black woman or a person of color, you better shut the hell up. That you know that you you're gonna catch hell, and that, that's what it seems like. You know, um, and and at, in Red Bank it was ridiculous because the they were saying you know it was only maybe like 20 people, like 20 people, and uh, of course they were. Oh, you, they said like hundreds. It wasn't. Yeah, I know. It, it wasn't hundreds. I know. Because you know you're ridiculous to even come to my show if you're of Trump. Right. Fan. They know who you are. Yeah, what the hell yeah. is your problem? What are you that's thinking? That's actually. That's my what question. Thinking? Why are you How here? People, what are you doing? Yeah. What do they know? What happened? They know a, Wanda and they go to the show and get pissed off. Obviously. <laughs> yeah. 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 She's probably. She's probably yeah. pro Trump. When I think right. about yeah. people that love exactly. Trump, it's like yeah. Wanda Sykes and Wanda. Yeah. 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 I'm your girl. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was like me or, or Sarah uh, Sanders, who's going to Yeah, yeah. yeah. please. That's now similar. I, I, was out. Let's uh, I was busy. Judy, you, know. you talk about how the culture has changed. You, you, you've provocatively said, I'm not going to perform at college campuses anymore. But, hello? Yeah, I mean, all right. I just have to say, if you count how many comics have had to apologize uh, in the past two years for old tweets, or for things that they have said on stage, and yet that orange piece of crap has never apologized. He lies every single day. I don't understand why we are held to a higher standard than the President of the United States. It is, and our joke, we're telling jokes. We are telling jokes. We're telling jokes. We're not making laws. We're not affecting people's lives and liberties and separating parents. From, we're not doing that. We're telling a joke. If you don't like it, turn off the channel, leave, go do something else. Okay, Nick, learn how to crochet. I can't, I can't. So, but college campuses, which was the bastion of freedom, of free speech, they now have Young bookers, young millennial bookers, or what's the new one? Millennial, Gen Y. Gen Lost all hope. Gen Z. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> These people are telling comedians what they can and cannot say before they go on stage. Now, here's what the, a basic problem is. There's no intent. You know, they never take the time to, what is the intent of this joke? What is this person trying to say? Instead, it's about Carlin's seven words. But now there's not seven anymore. There's 700 words you can't say. And now people are getting offended by proxy, you know, for someone. Oh, that, that sounds offensive. I should, I should really be offended by that. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, it's the climate is ridiculous. It's unbelievable. They have poisoned they yet, poison it when, you know, when they go in the clubs. And yet, so in some ways you're saying PC culture goes too far at times. And yet, you have a line in your thing about PC culture is just being nice. Or Yeah, I don't I, think that, I'm sorry, I, Yeah, I think there's a little bit of a distinction to make here. Because I think that one, when we're talking about um, the president, that is purposefully ignorant. Like he's being presented every day with information on how he could, could do better. And he is choosing again and again to harm people. Uh, and I think that 
you know, when we talk about like my responsibility, the responsibility that I'm actually like into as a comic is to pay attention and use evolving language and get better all the time. And I think sometimes we lump like kindness, respect in PC culture is this great word that people in our industry, especially straight white cisgender men, use to be able to say whatever the hell they want. And like, I'm on a bill with you. I actually don't want to follow you if you're going to like use the gay F word that I don't even use because I don't use words that don't apply to me that are also the last thing somebody else hears when they are beaten to death. I'm a stand-up comic. Um, <laughs> so, I'm kind of goofy. Um, no, I feel like stand-up comics are like the most serious people in the world. I'm a really serious person. I take my responsibility to young people and to especially people in the LGBT community so seriously. So like straight up, there's a joke that I have about periods that I used to say women and somebody asked me, can you, can you use the phrase people with periods because there are trans dudes who have periods? That is like no skin off my back. To See, like that's evolve. something I would make a joke about. <laughs> right. That's like, someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I just feel like that. Me, can you that, say people with periods? Like I would then write a bit about. But people I, I with just periods. feel like that's that's you know? somebody whose life is already so hard. Why do I, somebody right. who's marginalized, need to make somebody whose life is more marginalized? Right. Worse. But also, I am trying to lift. It's like, not. The it's not making their life harder. It's. I would it's, really disagree. Oh, okay. Well, I I feel like when you use, I don't use the that f word either. But when you know, I talk about being gay. I talk about being a gay parent. I talk about you know everything in my act. And when I talk about trans people, or if I talk about they, them, you know, everyone is fodder. You know, it's, it's not, it's as if I'm bringing them, I'm talking about them. I'm not putting them down. I'm putting them in my act. Does I'm, it make it harder to be a comedian, though, in a divided America? Like the panel's title, that divided America can't take a joke. Is that real for you when you're out in the world? <laughs> I well, think, Jenny, I also yeah. want to ask you, because sure. I think what you do on Seth Meyers, mm -hmm. which is jokes Seth can't tell, the idea mm -hmm. that he's a straight white man, he can't tell certain jokes, it's too taboo, but when they come from you, right. it's funny. Can you explain that in, in the context of what we're talking about? Sure. I think there's a phrase that a lot of people use in comedy, which is punching up, and I think you, um, part of what, com what comedians do, and, and Judy mentioned this before, is that you want to speak truth to power, and that... Um, making fun of someone who has a higher status than you is a very different act than making fun of someone who is below you, right? And so um, I think when people make jokes about the president, part of I think why we all feel like it's fine to do that is because he has a lot of power. And so we're not taking anything away from him really by doing that. Um, and so I think that the same way like if, you know, Seth is a straight white guy and if he wants to make jokes at lesbians' expense, it kind of feels like a bummer because he's punching down. That's a group of people that has less social power than he does. Right. Um, I identify as lesbian. If I make a joke about lesbians, it's it's in a different kind of fun. Can Again, you tell, like can I you tell the penguin joke. Which pe the, the penguin in tuxedos joke? I don't know if I remember it. I'm you so probably sorry. just said the punchline. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not in comedy. Oh, I think mean, was it that you could tell they were both they were lesbians. I, I'm gonna stick to news. Yeah, no, you that's okay. Comedy. No, I. Um, um, but I think, and again, like, and somebody who's lesbian might take issue. And I think I also, like you were saying, like I would feel open if somebody afterwards was like, "Hey, man, that joke about how you could tell the two penguins were both lesbians because they were both wearing tuxedos." I didn't love it. Um, I'm open <laughs> to hearing why they didn't love it. Like that's that's okay. But I think that like it's a different game for me to make jokes about lesbians because I'm not punching. Right down. Right. Let's talk sideways. a little bit about the male culture, the misogyny that it often exists, not just in comedy, in the world of comedy, but in clubs, in the industry. Louis C.K. was a, a, a pretty prime example of a, a Me Too person. He admitted to masturbating in front of women. There was a lot of controversy around his coming back. Thoughts? I, I'll give it to all of you. Uh, I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll be the... You know, um, I feel like you can't tell a painter not to paint, you can't tell a writer not to write, you cannot tell an artist not to do their work. And, you know, he is a comedian. That's what he does. And the only place he can do it are at comedy clubs. And if the comedy club is willing to have him, he, I believe in all freedom of speech, no matter what, you know, don't go see him. Uh, you can complain, you can, you can do whatever you want, but he's still a comedian, he's gonna go perform wherever he can. Uh, I mean, if we go back in history, I mean, if 
we go back to my living room growing up and my mother, you know, anti-Semite, <coughs> anti-Semitic, hates the Jews, you know. If we go back in history and see all these people who did horrible things that we had no idea about, you know, I mean, people still wear Chanel um, and she was a Nazi. Um, sorry, ladies. So, <laughs> but I, I feel like, you know, he did, he did apologize and, he, you know, he's, he, I mean, I don't know what to say. He's going to do oh, his own. Mark, can I, I could not. I, yeah, I feel like homeboy can stay home for a while. I, uh, I think, I think like uh, I hear what you're saying. I also feel like, boy, do I know some other people that really deserve those spots. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And he is making other people at every club he's at. The other comics have to be on the lineup with him. It's like some comic who's 22 and just up and coming, and like this is her big shot. Like. Man, straight up, like that guy, you are a terrible person if you yeah. try to get back in clubs this early. Just take a seat for like, could you like at least give us a couple years to just like have a like another person stand up and get a chance yeah. to talk? Like that is a wealthy, that is that guy, he does not need the money. He does not, like, what, what does he need? He needs the adulation? He needs the... the uh, you know, you know, I'm a comic. I still go out four or five nights a week because I love doing it. But, yeah, but you haven't, you know what I mean? <laughs> At least not to I, me. I, yeah. no. I mean, I, just, I will say what I love it. about this is that that we can agree to disagree. That's what right, there right. are. Four lesbians and not the same one single opinion. Right. Right. I love yeah. it. That's pretty, that's pretty impressive. We're not it's a monolith, me, clearly. To me, I, I I just feel like this. If okay, if if because I I get asked the question all the time yeah. about uh, is it is it too soon for him to come back? It's the audience. It's the audience. That's right. If, if he shows up right. and everybody stands there, I mean, sits there and claps and listens and laughs, well, I guess it's time for him to come back. Right. It's the, if the audience say, no, we're not, we don't, it's too soon. What the hell are you doing right. here? And they leave and they complain, then you need to go sit down. It's, it's, it's too soon. She's it's, absolutely It's not right. us. It's the audience. Well, and we don't it's the same know. Thing, it's the same thing with jokes. I mean, it's right. it's, exactly. If, if you say something and I don't, and maybe I don't like what you what you said or, or your joke, who am I to tell you that that joke is, is awful or, or I don't like it if these people are laughing? Right. It's, it's called, like what you were saying, it's called evolution, it's called right. evolving. I mean, back in, in, in this country, we had public hangings, families would pack a fucking picnic and would sit out and watch people, you know, hang, and then one day somebody said, this don't feel cool, does it? <laughs> Potato salad feels <laughs> amazing. I just can't enjoy my I, potato salad yeah. like I used to. It's We're literally hearing a joke about lynching. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Just, exactly. But I think, I think this gets to Judy's point from before when she was saying that people have things they don't want to hear and they just have a list of buzzwords and they think we can't joke about that. But we can joke about it depending on the context. Right. So like, context. yeah, do I want, if you ask me in the abstract, do you want to hear about joke about lynching? Probably my answer is no without knowing any other information. But I sure do want to hear that one. Right. Because the context, the context makes sense and, and, and Wanda's making an interesting yeah. and very smart point. I have a joke so about... Context makes, oh, context makes the difference. Right. Well, so does skill. I will also add that. Yeah. yeah. Because I, I mean, as much as I really believe in a responsibility to my audience, I don't think that there are topics or words that are off limits. Like, I really wanted this special to be called rape jokes because, like, that is a phrase people right. use all the time. And I'm like, oh, what if, what if when you Googled that, it was actually a survivor telling the jokes? Like, wouldn't that be more interesting to right. me? And I think, I think that when we talk about taboo topics... Like there are no words that are off limits, or but it's but you have to understand that things that affect people's lives, you have to tell in a skillful way, right. and you have to be you have to be good at it. But like, let's get back to it. the other aspect of the Louis C. Craig question, which is the male culture, the male dominated right, right. culture in comedy and in a lot of the other spheres that we talk about on this stage. How do you, as women coming up in this industry, combat it? Has it changed? How can oh. women punch through? I feel like one thing I just want to stand on that, because I get this, we get this question all the, well, you guys all get this question all the time, right? Like the, what's it like being a woman? I just would say that I, I, I always feel remiss if I don't take an opportunity to say, I know there's a lot of women here, like, it is exactly like it is in your industry, probably. Right, exactly. They're, like, I think we get asked this question all the totally time, right. and I'm so glad to talk about it, but you probably don't get asked this question. So I just want to say, I recognize that you probably also work in a culture where, like, uh, you are told to listen more often than speak up where like the person who has less skill is elevated above you because they um, have you know 
have privilege. Get paid so, more, they get paid way yes. more. Than yeah, exactly. Do. Like you're working twice as hard for half the Netflix special or whatever. Like, I get it. <laughs> I, I just, I think it's great for us to talk about it, and I think it also is really important for us. You know, for us Wanda to... and I started around the same time, mm -hmm. and, I, you know, we, I met her at Thursday nights at Comedy U Grand. We got $5, and it was a Thursday night, and it was the only show all week in New York City that was all women, and that's how we got to know each other, because we never got to work together. And I remember calling clubs in the 80s, and saying, hey, I'd like to work there, can you book me? Oh, we had a woman here three months ago, she didn't do well, <laughs> so we're not hiring any women. And it's, it's improved, um, but it's nowhere near the way it should be. There's no late night TV network television shows hosted by women. It's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. And the writers' um, rooms are always absolutely there. Women are the minority in writers' rooms on late night shows. And yeah, I feel like I get asked the question a lot. And um, I feel like I get asked it a lot on panels where there are, it's actually a delight to be around this many women. Right. <laughs> um, but I feel like I get asked it a lot on panels where most of the panelists are men and where the person conducting the panel is a guy. And it always has this vibe like, it's getting better, right? Because I feel like they want to be told it's getting better so we can all stop worrying about right, it. Right, right. And we can all feel like it's fixed. Right, and I, but, yeah. you know, how many, how many shows are there about miserable white comics, like, you know, sleeping on people's couches? They're just miserable. Like, these white guys get so many shows about their miserable lives. And <laughs> it's like, come on. We have yeah. a story to tell. I'm sorry you got divorced and you have to, like, sleep on someone's couch, yeah. okay? You don't deserve a friggin' show for five years making, like, a million... You know, it's hilarious. I got divorced. I want a place to talk about it. Right. Yeah. Cameron, Where someone you pays had me. A, you had an all-female room on the show Take My Wife, yeah? And was that intentional? Is that unfair if you're no. looking at it from the outside? Yeah, I mean, we had a, we had an all-female writers' room and female non-binary folks, and then the second season we had, um, like... Uh, half, I think it was half of the folks were also were people of color, and um, I don't know. I mean, uh, that is it unfair? I think that that show was about um, it was about a relationship between two women, and um, it felt like the folks that that we wanted to hire to tell that story would be folks who who haven't gotten number one, haven't gotten the opportunity to necessarily be in a room yet and also folks who might have a personal stake in the story so it does and, what's to the Judy, and also people with periods yeah well to, to, Judy, <laughs> to Judy's point I think it does matter then <laughs> I was a joke tag oh. <laughs> sorry no but there's a virtue to that as as well to having well I, I, a, I think it also what I would say is like it so it matters who gets the shows then yeah. Because, the, to Judy's point, it's like, if the more shows are about, say, women, people of color, like, the more that is reflected in the writing staff, because that's who's going to know that world, or... Um, Seeing you know, the world through that lens, you know? So, it, like, the shows that you see on your TV, that, that has, like, a cascading effect in terms of who's staffed there all over the place. Um, you talked about some of the apologies that have had to be made, Kevin Hart obviously being one about, <clears throat> and, and, and that's also about the role of Twitter and how oh. it's used in comedy. Mm -hmm. um, and Stephen Colbert had to do an apology about uh, a gay joke. Um, thoughts on that and, and, and the, the feedback that you get, the interaction you get on Twitter? Well, I know for me, um, especially if it's a if it's an African American comic, I, like I said something uh, when when Tracy Morgan did a, a, a joke, and but Tracy he's you know he worked with Glad and uh, right. he educated himself. Um, I love Tracy, um, and when Kevin Kevin's uh, stuff resurfaced, I missed the first apology when when it you know when it when it came out when he said years ago but to me that's that's the one time i will say to a comic hey man that's 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 wrong you you can't you can't say that um because i know personally know kids who have been kicked out of their homes right. have been abused uh, because of just who they are and and also, the joke just isn't funny. Right. It's that is funny. true. It's just not funny. It's not funny. It's yeah. not funny. And you can talk about anything, any subversive topic, right. as long as it's funny. You know, that's an important thing. And are there certain words that are off limits besides the F word that you were talking about earlier in, in comedy? 
Again, words. I think it's all with your intent. I mean, I, I just words. I use yeah. words that apply to me. So like, yeah, super cool with Dyke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think it all, to me really it all does depend in, on the context and do you have. Is that a community that you belong to? Do you understand the real meaning of that word? Because if it's a community that you don't belong to, you might be using that word real fast mm -hmm. and loose and not really understand the impact uh, of it. Yeah, like if I, if I hear a non-African American use the N word, it better be a damn funny good joke. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it right. better be like the, the best joke ever. That's very interesting. That's very interesting. All right, we have about four minutes left, so I want to give you one round uh, to summarize, which is, you know... I mean, like, Jesus had to write that joke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, you're funny. Um, can America take a joke in a divided America? And, and, and how important is comedy oh. when America is this divided? What, what do, do you put thought into that when you're writing up your bits. Uh, you know, I'll give you all 45 seconds to close. Who wants to start? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think that, well, first of all, I tour all, all over the country, like I'm, sh like I'm sure m many of us have an opportunity to, and um, I, I think that what is happening right now is that creating a physical space that people can come to and feel united is really important, um, because like on our phones, we feel so we feel so isolated and cut off and we're being sold this lie that like people on the coast feel one way and people in the middle of the country feel a different way. By the way, like a shit ton of people here in New York actually voted for this president. So like I just, it's, there's not one type of person that lives one type of place and queer people are everywhere, people of color are everywhere. And so when I, I, I love the idea right now of being able to provide people with a space that feels fun and, and feels lighthearted and, and where they can relax and we can all Event. That's why I take my responsibility to my audience so seriously. I think we have an opportunity. There's so much information happening right now. I think we have an opportunity to help people know what to focus on if we think that we know, if we have a strong feeling about it. And we have also have an opportunity to make people feel less alone and say, like, hey, I'm scared too. These, this is what I'm scared about. Here's some jokes about it. But at the end of the day, I'm also scared and I see you. Yeah, I, I'm just, I, I don't like where we are as a country right now. I mean, I, I'm, I'm an American, I love my country, and I'm just so disappointed in yeah. where we are right now. It's just so divided. And you know what? I have a great life. I'm, I'm healthy. My kids are he healthy. I got a little money. I'm, I'm good. And it would be easy for me just to go and enjoy my life and get on stage and talk about bullshit like, oh, yeah, my kids. And oh, boy, the teachers. Oh, you're doing homework. <laughs> I mean, that would, be, that would be so easy for me to do, but I care too much. And, uh, uh, and I know how, many, how much you know, people are suffering. And I want to make people laugh and talk about real stuff that maybe hopefully people will start talking to each other. So if you watch my Netflix special coming out April <laughs> 1st, <laughs> called Not Normal, <laughs> check it out. Well, uh, you know, my goal in life is to make people laugh, and that's it. And, you know, this, there's this idea of safe spaces and... You can't say this and you can't say that. The world is not a safe place, uh, especially for women. And I just, I honestly, I just want, you know, comedy is a uniter. You know, it brings Absolutely. people together. And all I want to do is get on stage. I have my opinions. Um, I use, you know, I read. I use everything as fodder. I just... Seriously, I just want to make people laugh. I don't want people to tell me what I can and cannot say. If you don't like my stuff, you don't have to listen to it, you know? You're responsible for, for you know, what you watch and what you mm. read. And, and, you know, I, I look at comics and I, you know, I'm like, oh, I don't find that funny, just like Wanda. But the audience does, and I'm like, okay, go with it. But right. it's really about unifying and making people laugh. And it's a powerful, powerful Thing, laughter. Well, that's a wonderful way to finish it off. You know, Tina Brown is waiting in the end to say goodnight to us. Thank you so Thank much. You. Oh. <clears throat>